Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office for Saturday, February the 24th, 2024. We have some breaking news to share with you all. Big severe weather event likely to take place across the upper Midwest into the central plains such as the Ozarks. Heavy snowfall, strong winds with this storm system, followed by an even bigger storm system for the west such as California. We can see several feet of snowfall, lots of heavy rain and some flooding along to go with more rain and strong winds for the Pacific Northwest. So in today's video, we are going to break down all those details because there's a lot to talk about. So, as always, here's a look at the latest European model for Sunday afternoon, February the 25th, 2024, and we are looking at the upcoming severe weather event, heavy snow, strong winds for the Northern Plains, for the Upper Midwest, and the Great Lakes. This is the first storm system that's really gonna target that area. And then, of course, for the Pacific Northwest, followed by an even bigger storm system. So let's like let's walk through the timing of this system. So, of course, over Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Montana, you're going to see the snow first. And then it's going to go further south into Northern California. In fact, California is not going to miss out on this system. We're only going to see about a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain in our area. So not a very impressive system by any means because the dynamics are just not there for a bombing cyclone, thankfully. But still, there will be impacts. Snow for the mountains, for the lower elevations, some road travel problems for early next week. I would highly suggest don't drive if you don't need to, okay? Please, if you really need to get somewhere... Please check the weather before you go. All right, and then eventually this surface slow will develop rapidly over the Great Lakes. And as it does so, we're going to have a lot of moisture advection. And we see these green areas here. That's thunderstorms. And I'm not just talking thunderstorms. We got the shear. We got the instability. We got the moisture for it. And wait until I show you the, the speed shear and directional shear forecast here in a second. Because it's going to really show you some big time severe weather. So Tuesday right now looks to be the big day. It looks to be the most concerning day as for, for severe weather, including damaging winds, tornadoes, some of which I still think could be strong, primarily in central southern Indiana, central southern Illinois is where I think we're going to have the best moisture quality and overlapping a shear and instability. And then by uh, Wednesday morning, this is for February the 28th, 2024, the second to last day. Look at how strong this system actually gets. Lots of blue on your screen. That is some moderate to heavy snowfall. We got some freezing rain in between that rain and the snow. This is going to be my thumbnail in today's video showing us the Marquise of rain, uh, freezing rain, and then snow, and then down to the south here, got a lot of rainfall and severe weather to talk about. And then that system moves, of course, into Quebec, Ontario, but don't let that fool you. That cold front is going to be felt all across the eastern seaboard, and we are talking some big-time heavy rainfall, big-time snow over New York, it looks like, according to the European model. Now, looking at the GFS model, let's take a look at that as we go forward in time. The GFS, not as apprehensive like the European model is showing, but still, we're definitely looking at some impacts. Snow for the mountains of the Cascades and, of course, for California, getting some showers out of this. And then once this gets into the Great Lakes and the northern uh, portion of the upper Midwest, that's where we get our severe weather. And again, we are talking about a... A very elevated threat for severe weather. I'm not talking about a moderate risk. I don't see that happening, but definitely a slight or, and well, what's already slight now, we could see a level three severe risk out of this, which is a, an enhanced risk, a code orange outbreak, we call it, for the upper Midwest, especially again for this area is where I am really focusing in on. This little square is where I think the severest weather will be taking place. The dynamics are there for a lot of tornado genesis to take place, supercells, that kind of thing. And then once this gets into the eastern seaboard, we are talking a lot about snow and some heavy rainfall. Now let's talk about the severe weather dynamics with this system. This is very important, folks, because we, I mean, the environment is there for um, supercell storms, okay? And the reason why is, we talked about this in yesterday's video, the wind profile 
is going to be favorable. That is wind speed or wind speed change with height, directional um, change with height. So we're seeing kind of everything here. Curved hodographs. We're not going to show that in today's video, but you get the idea. Winds out of the southerly direction over Indiana, over Illinois, and even over Ohio, right? See these streamlines going to be doing this. Let's take a look at the low levels, okay? 850 millibar winds. This is at 5,000 feet above the surface. And take note, what I'm overlaying here is your wind speed um, and directional change with height. And notice that the bl black arrow and the gr uh, yellow arrow are not perfectly aligned. They are misaligned. We are seeing a directional shear and speed shear at this point. And then when we look higher up into the atmosphere we are going to be using blue for this one we are talking about winds that are even curved a little bit more further so we can see right over here over kentucky over western kentucky we have uh winds that do significantly veer so if you draw a line from the the beginning of these arrows so we're actually going to use orange let's use green right actually we're gonna have to use dark um red okay so if you draw a line you can kind of get an idea that our photographs are kind of curved we're gonna see a lot of curvature to the stream wise vorticity that is in place over this area okay and this is the area that i'm really concerned about for supercells and any supercell that takes full advantage of this environment, we could see a fast moving supercell capable of producing, uh, I wouldn't say long track tornadoes. I don't think the environment is that volatile for this, but I think we're gonna see um, tornadoes that are fairly robust, really, really intense on the strong category, perhaps a couple of them, but we're gonna be looking at a lot of tornadoes with at least one or two of those possibly becoming strong EF2 plus tornadoes in the Illinois, Indiana, even down here towards southeastern Missouri, as well as even western Kentucky. Again, it is this box. I know I'm going on and on and on about this, but this is important. This whole box in here is where I think we have the best opportunity of seeing at least one or two strong tornadoes. So when we take a look here at our precipitable water anomaly, how much water is in the atmosphere in the first place, and is it more than it should be for this time of the year? And the answer is most certainly there is no question about it at all. We are talking rich, very rich uh, total pre uh, precipitable water amounts throughout the Midwest into the Great Lakes region. In fact, this little area right up in here across um, Grand Rapids, Michigan, into, say, Kalamazoo, Michigan, you're 450% of normal. That doesn't seem like a whole lot, but that goes to show you that there's a lot of water. There is a lot of water, and if that area pans out, that's literally 1.8 inches of piwats. That is very significant. So when we take a look at our dew points, definitely favorable. There's no question about it. All throughout this region, primarily where the best forcing will be, we're looking at dew points in the upper 50s to lower 60s. So yes, we do have enough moisture recovery uh, in, ongoing throughout this period. We'll flow uh, moving in from the south off the Gulf of Mexico, and we're going to see that low-level jet pick up, and that's going to help advect this moisture northward with time. And by the time we get these storms firing up, we should have enough moisture, enough uh, speed and directional shear for storm organization. When we take a look at our surface base cape, um, we're looking still at impressive amounts here, especially if we go kind of back in time, the whole timeline on this, we could have very elevated instability over Indiana um, for Tuesday morning. We'll see how, on how that pans out. This would likely be more elevated in nature, but surface base instability isn't so surprising either given uh, the amount of moisture that we're looking at and uh, instability right around 800 to 1500 joules per kilogram. So that is a moderate, uh, weak to moderate instability in place. And then by the afternoon hours here, we can see still weak to moderate instability throughout this region of Illinois, Indiana, uh, Illinois and Indiana, as well as 
Again, much of the Midwest, all the way down here into Texas. I don't want to forget all about you. I know I've been talking about these two states primarily is where I think, you know, you get the warm front, you get the cold front, you get that low. That's where we have the most best forcing dynamics to work with. And that's where I think we might have the best opportunity of some thunder activity. So now that we talked about that, actually, let's take a look here at the Storm Prediction Center. This is pretty important, and I felt like, you know what, we do need to uh, talk about this briefly because there is a slight risk for severe weather for day four. And as we do look at that, again, it really covers the areas that I outlined, and maybe I was a little too, uh, too little um, coverage on this. But yes, for Arkansas, all the way down here, I'm going to use my big old fat black pin. So anywhere that I've circled in here, you have a severe weather threat extending all the way into central Michigan. This includes for Grand Rapids, Michigan, Indianapolis, Fort Wayne. But primarily, if there's going to be an enhanced risk for severe weather, I'm going to paint out that area. It is going to be over in this area is where I think the best dynamics will be for severe weather. So I'm gonna color this in orange briefly. And that basically shows you guys where I think the enhanced risk of severe weather will be. Because again, moisture, quality, shear, that is there, lots of lift. We're gonna have all the ingredients together to get supercells. And again, just because you're under an enhanced risk does not mean you won't see anything. All it takes is a 10 sig for tornadoes would make all the difference, okay? And I don't think we'll see that, but I'm just saying there is three levels of enhanced risk for tornadoes. Actually, no, not for tornadoes. There's two, a 10 non-sig, and then there's a 10 sig, or it's 30 wind, or 30 hail you know you get the you get the concept okay um but right now there's a day four slight risk and we will know a little bit more tonight once that day three gets released from the storm prediction center now that we talked about the great plains severe weather event including for the great lakes region we really need to focus in on the west like california as well as oregon and washington because <laughs> there's just more coming I'm not kidding, there's just more and more and more. It just keeps going on and on and on. And I'll tell you what, it's not just the snow and the rainfall, it's gonna be about those temperatures too. Take a look, wait until I show you the temperature anomalies, folks. It's looking pretty extreme. And this is probably one of the only reasons that I will truly use the extreme word in my title of my video, possibly in my thumbnail as well, because this pattern is looking truly extreme. So going forward in time, we can see again that first or that next system dropping in or moving into the Pacific Northwest for Wednesday and Thursday next week. No, that's not the Midwest storm. We talked about that. And then this goes into California. Now, while this does not look very energetic on the European model, there are some other models that look uh, that take this a little bit more seriously, a little more bullish. But what I wanted to show you all is that look at how low the snow levels are going to get. Yeah, way down there into the two to 3,000 foot range. Yeah, we're going all the way down the hill here in the Sierras for heavy snowfall for California. And this is still progged for March 1st through March 2nd and the 3rd, maybe even the 29th of February. Yes, it's leap year this year. So we add an extra day to the calendar year. That means one extra day this year to celebrate with your friends and family, right? So we can see here lots of rain, lots of snow, and yes, the winds are going to be very strong. We're talking maybe um, another high wind event potentially for our area, and then look at it just continues. It doesn't end, doesn't it? It just continues through the weekend with showers, thunderstorms, no severe weather with this one, I don't think. We might see a marginal risk, but driven mainly by hail if that, and then it looks like much calmer weather comes into the forecast. So looking at snow uh, or snow amounts for the Intermountain West, we are looking at some significant numbers here, especially for the Cascades and also the, uh, not the Cascades, the Sierras and the Cascades up here. We could be looking at anywhere between four to eight feet. You heard it from my mouth, folks, up to eight feet of snowfall, potentially, for the highest elevations of the Sierra. Yeah, 
when we look at the GFS model, it's even more significant. Maybe even nine inch, uh, nine feet of snow. The Canadian model, even in that book. So we again, this this is very significant. This is nothing to be taken very lightly as far as snow amounts. And yes, even some very low elevation snow. I'm seeing some model outputs that have snow down to as low as 500 feet on uh, as early uh, for say Saturday into Sunday. So that is remarkable. That is not very high at all compared to with what we've been dealing with so far this winter where our snow levels have been between five to 7,000 feet. So a much colder storm coming our way. Rainfall totals for the valley locations, anywhere between two to four inches. So a big wet storm. Look at this for the, uh, the Cascade Range. You uh, can see a lot of um, rain down into the valley floors, anywhere between four to three to six inches perhaps. So again, some flood, flood concerns are definitely a possibility. Southern California does not look to get a whole lot with this one, except for the higher elevations where you might, that would be in the form of snow. So you're going to have to extrapolate that down. But for the valley locations in so SoCal, probably about an inch or less is anticipated. So now, another thing that I really wanted to cover in today's video is the temperature anomalies. We are talking extreme temperature anomalies from one end of the scale to the other end of the scale. And yes, Ethan B., we need to talk about this. Saints Angel, tonight we need to convene. Actually, um, if you're watching this, um, actually, um, John 54-2E, Saints Angel, as well as Ethan B., you three, okay, I'm naming you all down. I'm shouting you out in this video. We need to have a meeting tonight. It's a mandatory meeting to cover the severe threat as well as the temperature anomaly, temperature anomalies, because this is looking very significant. All right, so let's go forward on with the video. So you can see well above average temperatures. In fact, Saints Angel was telling me she might have temperatures in the mid to upper 60s over the next couple of days. That is ironic, and it's only going to get warmer, okay? It's not going to get, it's going to cool down briefly, but then it's going to warm right back up from here on out. So day five, you got some cooler temperatures moving through, and then guess what? It's back. It's back. The temperatures are going to be above average for the Midwest, and not just above average. We might see record high temperatures. This is the European Ensemble forecast, by the way. This is an average of 51 members put together to make a model ensemble, okay? And when you see colors like this, we're seeing 30 degrees above average over Iowa. That is eye dropping. That is, that's going to get a lot of people's attention. And then, of course, over California, very far below average. So it's going to be winter and it's going to be summer in two different regions of the United States. Can you believe that? Four seasons in one, I should say. And then when we go forward in time, I mean, this is just remarkable 36 degrees above normal on the european ensemble forecast and when we look at the deterministic forecast yeah yeah okay okay now you're what what's what's your problem what's why are you do, going crazy like that now before i do in the video i have four important announcements to share with you and the most important one is that a total Solar eclipse will be happening on Monday, April the 8th, 2024, at approximately 12.15 p.m. Central Daylight Time, where I'm going to be at least. For your localized area, it's going to be a little different because anywhere along this path, the shadow moves across the United States at different times. So, therefore, it's 12.15 for me, but if you are in, say, Buffalo, it's going to be a little later. But either way... I am driving to Frederick Fredericksburg in Texas on April the 4th, and I will be there in time to see the total solar eclipse on April the 8th, and then I'll be driving back home from that. So I am so excited. I will be live streaming this. I am going to be using my drone to see this from the air. It is going to be a spectacular show that no one has seen yet since August 21st of 2017. And so I am very blessed and happy that I am going to be bringing you guys this live. 
I'll probably be live streaming my road trip to Texas as well, depending on how things go. Let me know in the comments if you want me to live stream my road trip to Texas on Thursday through at least on Saturday. The second announcement is that my first Atlantic Hurricane Seasonal Outlook will be released on April the 15th, which is a Monday, at 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Different time zones mean different times, so if you're in Central Daylight Time, it's going to be at 4 p.m., and if you're in Eastern Daylight Time, it will be released at 5 p.m. And then I'll have another one for May 1st, and then May 28th with the following times on that release as well. And then my first routine tropical weather outlook will begin on June the 1st, as I stated in my previous videos, and will run through November 1st, because this season is expected to be extremely active. There are all indications of that. More on that when I do release my seasonal outlook, which doesn't look very good at all. This includes rapid updates and live streams on tropical systems as well as they are happening near shore like I did last year. Then uh, thirdly, if you all want to join the Weather Force Discord server today, there is a link in the description below this video. Hey, Saints Angel there. Uh, I, she's awesome. She is awesome, you guys. Got to meet her. Um, Butter Dog is in there. Weather Republic. Sunny is in there. Uh, Diana, uh, KORF, Lucky. Um, we got many people. We got Fire Ant in there. Some good people to meet that you all don't want to miss. Um, great server. I highly encourage you all to join it today. And then lastly, you could follow me on Twitter for latest updates. Link in description. It's actually called X, but I like sticking to the old school of Twitter. Well, anyways, thank you all for watching today's video on Saturday, February the 24th, 2024. I sure hope you all liked the video. If you did, please consider subscribing. It really means a lot, folks. I love you guys. I really, really do. If I didn't, I would not be making videos on a daily basis, except for tomorrow. I will not have a video out tomorrow because I have a church meeting to attend, and then after that, I have work. Maybe I'll do a live stream. I'll surprise you guys. It'll just be a surprise stream, I guess, um, on the threat of that severe weather and the cool down that's coming. But otherwise, I will be back on Monday. Monday, that is. February the 26th, 2024. Have a great rest of your Saturday. I will be back with you more soon.